and we're back. Wes Anderson has delivered nothing but pristine work in his career. With his bright color palettes, symmetric cinematography, and flattened perspective, always surrounding wonderful characters. And while it's hard to pick a favorite among his works, Rushmore has always held a special place in my heart because of its characters. They're unique, they're flawed, they grow, and they complement each other beautifully. Max Fisher immerses himself in all things Rushmore, but paradoxically doesn't seem to have any friends. Hey Ronnie, hey Danny, hey guys. In the back, I said mm. shotgun! He's only popular in his dreams, and he doesn't really fit in with the other students at Rushmore. In reality, he's not like the other students, as he's being raised by a single father who does unglamorous work as a barber, a fact that Max hides from and tries to overcompensate for. What's your dad do, Max? He's a neurosurgeon at uh, St. Joseph's Hospital. It's like he runs all these clubs to not only prove that he belongs at Rushmore, but that he can actually run the place. What's going on here, Maxie? Oh, hey, Coach Beck. Good to see you. This is where we're putting in the new aquarium. I'm on charge of the committee, if you can believe it. This is my baseball diamond. Yeah, I know, and uh, I believe it's being relocated a few feet over. And it's actually the self-appointed sense of authority that leads Max to his cross in the first place. This is all part of the image of himself that Max projects. He's a part of all these clubs because he wants people to think that he's important and popular. It seems his number one priority is to impress people. I should probably be trying harder to score chicks. That's the only thing anybody really cares about. He wants people to think that he's a womanizer. We shook hands. Big deal. I didn't give him my phone number. And he gets better grades than he actually does. That's a coincidence. My top schools where I want to apply to are Oxford and the Sorbonne. My safety's hard. And that he comes from a wealthier background. Look, I may not be rich, Mr. Bloom. My father may only be a doctor, but we manage. This lie about his one remaining family member perfectly encapsulates that Max is ashamed of where he comes from and who he is. The image that Max creates for himself, what he strives to be, he finds in Herman Bloom. Herman has a wife, two sons, and a multi-million dollar steel company. It also doesn't hurt that Bloom respects Max's beloved school. Because the fact is, you go to one of the best schools in the country. Rushmore. And then he similarly has a chip on his shoulder about having a poor upbringing. You guys have it real easy. I never had it like this where I grew up. But like Max, Herman is unhappy with his life as well. In a scene paying homage to The Graduate, where Ben Braddock hides from his life of expectation and responsibility at the bottom of his pool, Herman hides from his life of a wife that chases other men and disappointing sons who think very little of him. Dog. Pull your head out of your ass. This is part of how Max and Bloom complement each other. Max admires Bloom for his wealth and status, while Herman admires Max for his passion and youth. Each sees himself in the other, which makes sense given that Bloom is an adult who acts like a child, and Max is a child who tries to act like an adult. Dr. Guggenheim, I don't want to tell you how to do your job. But... Also notice that Herman's opening remarks inadvertently give Max advice to take down Herman later in the movie. Take dead aim on the rich boys. Get them in the crosshairs and take them down. Given this parody, it's not that surprising that Max and Herman fall for the same woman. Rosemary Cross, like the men courting her, also hides things about herself, but more subtly. So subtly, in fact, that neither Max nor Herman notice because they're too distracted by the smart, sweet, compassionate first grade teacher they see in front of them. But the fact is, she's teaching at her dead husband's school. Hey, how'd you decide to teach at Rushmore? My husband went in. Also note that the movie makes a point to say that it's her first year at Rushmore. And this is your first year at Rushmore, Dave. Uh-huh. So her husband died before she started teaching there. When did he die? Last year? It's almost as if she chooses to teach there in order to get closer to the memory of him. And if you don't believe me, she's also living in her dead husband's house. Nice house. Yeah, um, it isn't mine. I'm just sort of house-sitting. And also sleeping in her dead husband's room. Well, I mean, you live in his room. With all his stuff, it's kind of... I was married to him. This woman is beyond emotionally scarred, but you never know it. Because she doesn't hide at the bottom of a swimming pool. She internalizes her pain. Right. One dead finger. All of these characters are hiding the truth about themselves. Max is hiding that he's a poor kid with poor grades. His only real friend is in elementary school. Herman is hiding that he's miserable with his wife and kids. Never in my wildest imagination did I ever dream I would have sons like these. 
Miss Cross is immersing herself in her late husband's memory, as if trying to hide from herself the fact that he's gone. There's a disconnect between who they are and who they want to be. By the third act, Max stops hiding who he is and starts being true to himself, and tries to help Herman and Rosemary do the same. But how does Max get there? One theme that Rushmore tackles is nothing short of finding the secret to life. What's the secret, Max? Secret, I don't know. I, I think you just gotta find something you love to do and then do it for the rest of your life. For me, it's going to Rushmore. Max knows that you have to do what makes you happy, and he finds happiness in going to Rushmore, so he does the shit out of that. Once he's expelled, he's still happy for a while at Grover Cleveland because he's still friends with Miss Cross. She's replaced Rushmore as the thing that he loves. Notice that what finally gets him kicked out is an attempt to impress Miss Cross, as if he's choosing her over Rushmore. She's my Rushmore, Max. Yeah, I know. She was mine, too. And when he loses Miss Cross, that's when Max truly hits bottom. Please get out of my classroom. To add insult to injury, he gets punched in the face and rejected by his one remaining friend. What's crucial to note though, is that Max hitting bottom can all be attributed to his own immaturity, despite him trying to act like an adult. He's not mature enough to see the age difference between himself and Miss Cross as a problem. Has it ever crossed your mind that you're far too young for me? It crossed my mind that you might consider that a possibility, yeah. And he can't accept that such an age difference would keep them apart. You're not attracted to me. See, lovey? That's 15 years old. Attraction doesn't enter into it. But try as he might to hide it, his age and immaturity come out. Oh my god! I wrote a hit play! Like when he lies and puts his reputation ahead of his friendship with Dirk. Like everything you do, big show, no results. What do you call getting a hand job from Mrs. Calloway in the back of her Jaguar? And then denies it. Did you say it? Who told you that goddamn lie? Or when he tries to get Miss Cross fired just because she dated someone else. So your latest attempt at sabotage backfired. But most importantly, he doesn't take any responsibility for himself. I got kicked out because of you. He puts the blame for all of his problems on Miss Cross. Rushmore was my life. Now you are. And in a way, Miss Cross and Herman seem to hit bottom with Max. Somewhere, waiting for someone to come at us somewhere. Herman is divorced and estranged from his sons. Mm. Well, I'm a little bit lonely these days. And Rosemary resigns from her job to a self-imposed exile. Max doesn't start his climb back until he realizes that he can't keep hiding who he is, and he can't fake his way to happiness. I faked all the results. Why? Because it didn't work. I thought it would, but it didn't. It's a metaphor. With this realization, and one Cat Stevens song later, David Connors, Rory Marshall, to the Greg Holloway, Duncan, he drops the facade that Margaret he's been putting Man, up and starts being Woody honest. Jackson. Mr. Bloom, this is my father, Bert Fisher. Also, notice how Herman's face subtly falls a bit when he's introduced to Bert, because so many things about Max suddenly become clear to him in that half second. Nice to meet you, Mr. Fisher. Bravo, Bill Murray. From there, Max helps Herman get his life back in order, and tries to set right what he had wronged. I thought the aquarium was your idea. Well, I gave it to my friend. I always wanted to be in one of your fucking plays. I know you did, mate. In the dedication of his play, he publicly acknowledges his dead mother for the first time, and warmly refers to Miss Cross as his friend. And to Edward Appleby, a friend of a friend. Max is now mature enough to be who he is. Miss Cross, I'd like to meet my father, Bert Fisher. He's a barber. This is my friend, Rosemary Cross. And to accept the fact that Miss Cross can be his friend without being romantically involved with her. He's even mature to the point of being self-sacrificing. No, I didn't get hurt that bad. In a way, Rushmore is kind of the ultimate coming-of-age tale. Max's change isn't directly from an outside source, like a love interest or a friend. It mostly just comes from a change in attitude on his part. A change in strategy. A change in outlook. He learns who he is, and learns to love who he is. And instead of seeing the people in his life as a means to an end, or obstacles to an end, he sees them as the treasures that they are. Bravo, Max. I like your nurse's uniform, guy. These are OR scrubs. Oh, are they? <laughs>